QuickBooks Online 2024. Import bank transactions into QuickBooks. Get ready and some coffee because we're going on air with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online bank feed practice file we set up in a prior presentation. After setting up the QuickBooks file, we talked about some of those foundational items that need to be set up in a similar way as like the infrastructure of the accounting system so we can run our normal accounting process within them. The normal accounting process typically being the recording of financial transactions, usually found under the plus button, grouped by cycle, customer or revenue cycle, vendor or expense cycle, and the payroll cycle. As we enter these transactions, we construct the financial statements, one of the primary goals of the accounting system, and then we can communicate with these individuals we do business with in the centers on the left-hand side, sales center or revenue center uh, or customer center, expenses center or vendor center, and the payroll center or employee center if we're processing payroll through QuickBooks. One of those foundational items is in the transactions, and that would be the chart of accounts. So within the chart of accounts, we have cleaned up some of our chart of accounts, removed many of them so we can actually build the chart of accounts as we do our bank, uh, our bank feeds. However, now we want to upload some transactions that we have downloaded from the bank. Remembering there's a couple different ways that we can connect to the bank, get the banking information, in other words, into our QuickBooks file. We could do it in the interview process when you first set up QuickBooks. I don't typically like to do that because I like to see the chart of accounts. We could then go into the chart of accounts here and then set up our bank accounts. It has to be a bank type of account or an a, a credit card type account and then we can connect to the bank or we can simply go to the bank transactions which is the first tab and connect to the bank this way we can also upload our transactions which is what we're going to do in the practice problem after having uploaded the transactions we'll be in the same place as if we connected to the bank in other words the information coming from the bank in this location, which I call bank feed limbo, which we then need to add information, that minimum information being the accounts, so we can pull it from here into the creation of the financial statements. So in a prior presentation, we downloaded in a couple different formats, the information from a bank. So this is the mock information that could be in a QuickBooks type of format, or it could be in a CSV type of format. Now, here's the CSV. This is the one that we're, or this is the type of format we're going to use. We'll actually create our own CSV file and format it in a similar fashion. And that'll give us a better understanding of what is actually being included when we download this information, as well as what is the file type that is being used. Now, if I was to upload over here to QuickBooks and I say upload transactions, you can see here it says manual upload your transactions manually <laughs> uh, how it works number one open a new tab and sign into your online bank account number two export your bank statements in csv uh, qfx qbo qfx or txt format 
Now, when we say bank statements, I don't think they actually mean like the bank statements that you're used to seeing in a PDF format or just a paper format, uh, formatted, you know, with the subtotals and everything. They mean the actual detailed of the transactions that are going to be downloaded. And the primary formats are going to be the CSV file that most banks have, which is kind of like an Excel uh, file, uh, but it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be stripped of its formatting, a comma delimited file. And then we have the QBO file. That's the other most common type of file that you will see. You might see if you have nothing else, a TXT file, text file. But usually I think the default is going to be a CSV if they don't have the QBO file. So we recall that the data that we get will look something like this. Let's create our own file and that will allow us a lot of flexibility to upload our own data so that we can create certain scenarios specific to what we want to practice. So I'm going to right click on Excel and just start with an Excel file, noting that the Excel file is not typically what I want to be uploading possibly. I'm probably going to want to convert it to a CSV file to upload it. However, I want to format it in Excel because Excel allows me to do formatting, which will help me to kind of set up my data. So, and then when I save it as a CSV file, it'll strip the formatting. So I'm actually gonna lay down the formatting I prefer, which is I'm gonna select the triangle, right click here, and I'm gonna format, and I'm gonna say, I wanna see it currency, negative numbers bracketed and red, so I can tell what's going on, no dollar sign. I will keep the decimals and okay. All right, so then, and so then I'm just gonna mirror the column format here. So what we typically have is a date uh, type of field. So let's say that we're gonna be doing this in January and February. So I'm just gonna make up some dates to start off in the beginning of January. So I'm gonna say one, uh, one, two, four, and notice it's not formatting as a date. So I'm gonna select the column A, home tab, number group, drop down, and I want to see it as a, a short date. So 1124, and then we have the actual dollar amount typically. So I'm going to say this was, let's just say a generic $100, and then the description that's going to be in place. Now I'm going to say this was an increase instead of a decrease, and I'm going to give it just a generic kind of uh, description of a Stripe transaction. Now Stripe is something similar to like uh, a PayPal transaction in that it went through a, an intermediary. So that's gonna be a little bit more difficult possibly for me to assign to an account. And we'll take a look at, at that kind of situation in future presentations. And then let's say this is gonna be one, three, two, four. And let's say that we had then a decrease now of let's say $67. And let's say that was for the SoCal Edison, uh, which you often will have something like this in the memo, which includes Edison, which is my, which is going to be utilities, but it has a bunch of other jargon within it. And let's say that we then have one, three, uh, two, four again. And then we've got, let's say another 79. And let's say this is ver, ver let's say, Verizon, and then again, it would probably have a bunch of jargon after that, something like Verizon payment or something, and then bank jargon, right? And let's say we had another deposit, one, uh, five, two, four, and let's say we had a deposit for uh, 900, and let's say that it was just a cash deposit, which means we might not have anything in the memo. It might just see it, it might just be a, a cash deposit. It's going to indicate in the memo in some way, which means I don't have anything to tell who it came from. It was just cash that was put into the bank, not with an electronic transfer, but in some other type uh, of format. Let's add another one on one, uh, six, two, four. And let's say that we had, uh, let's say 9,500. I'm just making this up. And let's say it was another Stripe transaction this time. Stripe transactions coming through. Stripe is going to be helping us to to organize our our uh, information for deposits that are going into our account. And let's just do a couple other uh, normal ones here. Let's say let's say we have like an Office Depot one. So let's say one 
uh, 6 and let's say we said negative uh, 678 and this was office office depot that we paid or something and then it has a bunch of numbers and stuff after it and then let's say that we have one on one eight two four and let's say this was for uh uh three thousand seven hundred income and let's say that's from youtube youtube da 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 google or something right it's gonna say something in the memo something like that and that was on one eight two four and then let's say on one uh 10 uh let's just keep it at one eight one eight two four uh let's put another stripe one at uh let's put we need some more decreases here let's say that we had a decrease of just uh three hundred dollars three hundred dollars and then again i didn't put anything in uh, the memo is just a withdraw with draw so it might say atm withdraw so again i don't have enough information in that case we want to avoid doing that unless it's for a specific purpose like my my personal use type of purpose right because then again i don't have the information to put that anywhere the, i don't know where it's going to go and then we might have different like amazon so i might say one nine uh two four and let's say we had income of like uh of 430 from let's say amazon uh, media and let's say now, now there could be multiple amazon uh type of ways that you could get paid right so depending on what you're doing uh for selling for from amazon and then we could continue it from here let's keep it at here for now and then i'll save this and we'll upload it let's do a couple more let's do a rent one let's do one nine two four and let's say we had like two thousand uh four hundred and let's say this was uh uh mr or let's say rental company just a generic name that's their actual company name and then again we've got some something after it and so on so we've got the rent in there and and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy a few of these so that we can memorize the transactions. Let's actually copy this whole thing. And so I'm going to copy this and put it down here. And then I'm just going to change the dates to February. And we're going to imagine that every, everything is repeating in February. And so when we start making the bank rules, we'll be able to see uh, that, the two, that it should be applying the bank rule to these two items so we'll do this okay so we've just mirrored the whole thing all right and so then i'm going to save this i'm going to file save as and let's first save it just as our excel document and i'm just going to call it bank data 364 that's the that's the number of the presentation that we're on so that so that uh, uh i'll be able to share this and then I'm gonna I'm gonna say okay, let's close that for now and let's find it. So I put it into this folder, and is that folder open? Where did it go? Done day, and then so it's uh, so here it is. So there's the data file. Notice if I right click on it and look at the properties of the file, it's an XLSX, which is an Excel worksheet. So now I'm just going to open it up and then save it as a uh, CSV file. So let's open it back up. And then I'm going to save it as a CSV, which will strip the formatting of things like these negative numbers. So we're going to say file, save as, browse. And then on the dropdown, I want to save it as just a comma delimited CSV file. So I'm going to save it. And then boom, let's close this back out. And then uh, there it is. So now it looks similar, but there, you can see the difference between the two. If I right click on this one and look at the properties, you can see it is actually a CSV file. So let's go into that file just to take a look at what it looks like. So I'm gonna open it up and you can see it changed the formatting. 
So it, 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 it just put a very basic, stripped all the Excel formatting because it's really just a comma delimited file now. All right, so now that we have that, let's go into QuickBooks again and you will recall where we are at. We're in the transactions. We're in the bank's transactions. We're gonna upload the file. I think we have a file format we can use, the CSV file. We will select the file and then let me, I could drag and drop it, I think, but let's see if I can copy the location here. And so there it is. And you can see when I do that, it only shows the CSV file. I can't even see the Excel file because the Excel file isn't a file format I can upload. So I have to have this CSV file. If you don't see it, it's probably because you have an Excel file and it won't let you upload it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, all right, continue. It says, uh, which account are these transactions from? Select the QuickBooks account for the bank file you want to upload. Now, I, I've already made the bank account. I'm gonna imagine it's this B of A account. If you didn't have one, you can make the account as you go, adding a new account. I'm gonna choose this one because we made it first, continue, and then tell us about the format. So is the first row in your file a header? I'm gonna say, no, it's actually not. We don't have a header row. It's, it's uh, just the data. And it probably it might've made it easier if I had a header row on it, but we did not put a header row. <laughs> so call, how many columns show amounts? In other words, did they put the increases and decreases in two columns or are they in one column? They're only in one column. So what's the data format uh, in your file? The date format, it's a, uh, what did I put it? I put month, it's uh, month. Let me just check it one more time. Let's make sure we get this right. So let's go back into here and check the date format. So month, uh, day, and then a four digit year. So we're gonna say, okay, let's go back over here. So it's, it has two digits for the month, day, year. So I think this would be the closest format. Uh, and then it's got dashes. Okay, month, day, year, four digits for the year, even though, okay. And so then the first one says, uh, date the date. So that's gonna be column one is the date. If I map this over, so these are, this is, it looks kind of funny because it looks like rows, but it's actually telling us, it's asking what the columns are column one, two, and three. So column one is the date, and then the description is actually column three, the description, and then the amount is column two. So we're just mapping out the data. That might be a little bit easier if I had added a header row and then told the system that there was a header on it, but there's no header on this one, so we can just apply it out. And then the check number, there is no check number, so, so we don't have a check number because we didn't have any checks, right? So we're gonna say, all right, let's go ahead and continue. So it says, uh, let's verify and import your transactions. Check, generally income transactions post as positive numbers and expense transactions post as negative numbers. Occasionally some banks send us files with this reversed. So do the transactions below correctly indicate income and expense, keep original values reverse. So if you have a financial institution, which flips the positive, the positive and negatives for deposits and expenses, which could happen because of the debit and credit format that they're using on the banking side of things, that might be why they, they give you data files that have the deposits, which are negatives right, in the, right? So, but, and if that's the case, they allow you to reverse it automatically, which is really neat. But we don't need to do that because our positive numbers are the deposit. So we've got the stripe as a deposit. And then this is SoCal is a negative, Verizon's a negative, cash is a positive, stripe is a positive, Office Depot is a negative, YouTube's a positive, ATM withdrawal negative. So I think everything is good. So let's go ahead and say, okay, select all of them, boom, and then we'll just continue. So QuickBooks will import 20 transactions using the fields uh, you chose. Do you want to import? Yes, we do. All right, and so import completed. Next step, accept your transactions. You're in control of how your bank info goes into QuickBooks. Transactions only show up in your books after you review and accept them. In other words, they're putting them into what I would call bank feed limbo. And then it gives you this little widget here 
Power up QuickBooks to get organized automatically. Review a few expenses now to help QuickBooks learn how to categorize for you. When you're done, see a snapshot uh, of how you spend. So we could review this. I'm going to skip this because I think it's just as easy to just go into the actual transactions. It's trying to automate the transactions, which QuickBooks might be okay at doing. I'm going to close this out. And I'm going to I'm going to say and then up here deposits that work uh, as fast as you do have money on hand. I'm going to close this out. They're trying to upsell me on something. So I'm going to then close the hamburger. So now we have our little tag here. And I like that QuickBooks actually made this little tag a lot smaller than it has before because it, it takes up a lot of empty space up top. Downtown, you, downtown, down below, you have the actual transactions. Now we'll go over these in more detail. What I just want to point out now is that it pulled it into what we call bank feed limbo. It's not actually creating the financial statements. In other words, if I if I was to duplicate this tab and then go into the reports, for example, on the left hand side and then go into the reports and open up, for example, a balance sheet, which should have stuff in it. If anything was posted, you could see nothing's been posted. So this is what I mean by the, by the idea that if you pulled in a bunch of data, you might think that everything's just going to happen automatically because that's kind of the marketing of most online accounting softwares with bank feeds. They kind of market as though it's just really just a snap of the fingers. Everything is AI. You could just pull it in and it'll, but that's not really the case. You still have to kind of, if you think of AI terms, train it, uh, you have to give it rules. Uh, so that so that you can add the vital piece of information that last piece being at least the account that it needs to go to number one and two the the contact either the vendor or the customer is also uh, useful information so we'll go into this whole field uh, in more detail in a following presentation and then we'll start to basically add these transactions and as we do we will create bank rules so the first time we add the transactions from the first set of bank feeds is very important because then we, if we do that rigorously and set up good rules, then it'll be automatic going forward. You could try to use QuickBooks. Not QuickBooks is trying to guess where it should go, but uh, I would make your own rules, right? Because because you want to make them, you want to make sure they're correct because <laughs> it's going to repeat after after this point in time. So you'd like to really spend a little bit of time on the first few months and every time there's a new vendor or a new customer and once you get that done well then you automate the process with confidence and we'll talk about that more in the future